I'm going to go ahead and record your class today. Uh, a little quieter than normal, I guess. Uh, but if you go ahead and take a look at uh, your warm-up for today, just noticing a couple of group errors. Um, more so with number two. Number one, factoring looks good as I walk around. You got one side equal to zero. Uh, as far as number one is concerned, you got one side equal to zero. And then most of you took some time to either do AC grouping or you thought about the numbers that would multiply to give you six, but then add again to negative five. Uh, indeed, the numbers that multiply to give you a positive six, but add to a negative five are negative three and negative two. So you use that information to then factor your problem. It factors down to be x minus three, x minus two, but please don't forget about this whole equal zero business that you had to kind of start off with there. This is now an equation that needs solved. So step one in solving by factoring was we got one side equal to zero. Step two is to factor. Step three is to use what's called the ZPP, right? Do you remember what that stands for, ZPP? What was that? Remember? ZPP. Zero product property, good, yeah, yeah, good. Um, so yeah, we use the zero product property, which states, you know, if you have two things multiplied together, and they equal zero, well then one of those two things, or both, has to be zero. So you set x minus three equal to zero, add three to both sides. We get one of our answers of three, right there. And then you have to set x minus 2 equal to 0 and solve. So we got our answer of x equal 2 right there. That's just a little review of the three steps for factoring to solve. In step 2, the mistake I saw was right at the beginning. Remember that when you square root both sides, you do have to include a plus or minus in front of that radical. You'll see that pretty consistently we're producing two solutions. So in this case here, uh, if I consider the positive and negative square root of 9, I get plus or minus 3, which leads me to break this problem apart into two pieces. Um, if you read the problem, we now have x plus 3 equals positive 3, and we have x plus 3 equals negative square root of 3. So I had to kind of break the problem apart into those two pieces. Uh, so you actually end up getting x equals 0 and x equals negative 6 when you solve the resulting equation. Completing the square is so surprised as I walked around. I think that's the toughest method, but you did really well with it. I was really impressed. Um, but most of you know that that first step one was taken care of. So the constant was moved to the other side. You did b over 2 and you squared it. You added 9 to both sides. Factor the left, square root the right. 3 plus or minus the square root of 22. It looked fabulous. So I'm glad to see that that over the three-day weekend didn't completely disappear for you folks. And then lastly, aha, <laughs> number four was not possible. You couldn't affect it. A uh, little preview of coming attractions. You're having a test for me probably next week with how broken up this week is. Uh, so next week you're going to have a test for me. It is structured in this way. Now what do I mean by that? <laughs> uh, there's a portion of the test where you get to pick whatever method you want to use for solving your quadratic. Pick whatever method you want. But there's also a portion of the test, do you see how I have the method in parentheses, where I tell you the method you're supposed to do. So, if you do take a look at, there's a completing the square problem up here. Let's say you decided to use today's technique, the quadratic formula for that particular problem. You get no credit because you used the wrong method. So, for a lot of the, for a portion of the test, I should say, you get to choose the method. But for another portion of the test, I get to choose the method. So if it's like this up here, you have to use the method I suggest, or you don't get credit for that problem. Make sense? So this is kind of a preview of that. Because this is our last section of notes. Uh, then we do applications for the rest of the week. You picked up that packet when you walked in. Uh, I'll talk more about that in just a bit. All right. So for today, I'm going to sing to you. <gasps> Are you excited? I, 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 you're probably right, Jared. I wouldn't be excited either because I'm horrible. Horrible. Um, today's technique uh, is a technique known as the quadratic formula. And um, 
If I have time, I'll show you a proof of where it comes from. It actually does come from completing a square, but it will very quickly put you to sleep if you're not ready to go to sleep already. So I'm going to hold off on that until I definitely want you just all knocked out and I need some quiet time to myself at my desk. I'll put you to sleep with that little gem. Um, but for right now, <laughs> we're just going to use the quadratic formula to solve for x. Um, so does everybody see where we're at? We're in the box in your note packet. Yeah? Uh, okay, so let's read it together. Okay, so little tip. Regardless, if the quadratic formula has rational or irrational, real or no real solutions, every quadratic of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c will now have a solution that you can find, even if that solution is no real solution. There's an answer that you can get to. When in doubt, so remember when I was talking about your test, like two seconds ago? There's a portion of the test where you get to pick the method. This method will always, always produce a solution for you. So this is your go-to if you're in a jam and you can't figure out an easier way to do the problem. This is like your sort of like panacea, if you will. Have you heard that word before? A panacea? It's a cure-all, right? So this is your cure-all for any issues you might have had with any of the other methods from before. So this will always produce a solution for you. All right, you ready for me to sing? Here it goes, kids. Here it goes. It goes to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. Have you heard this song before? Pop Goes the Weasel, you've heard. Have you heard the quadratic formula song before? No? Oh. Okay, here it goes. You ready? It goes, X equals negative B plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, like that. Oh, magic. So you have to memorize the formula. I'm going to sing that song a lot today. You might end up singing it in your head as you're doing the homework tonight. Please don't dive on your pencil. What? <laughs> Nope. <laughs> You're funny. Okay, so in example one, oh yeah, about warm up number four, that one that you messed around with AC grouping and you couldn't factor. Uh, so yeah, oh yeah, about that. Uh, I'm going to show you how you could use the quadratic. That's not a, that's not a word. The quadratic formula to solve for x in that problem. That's our big idea for today. So step one. You got to get it to look like this. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. Uh, to be honest with you, this is an equation though. And what we're going to go ahead and do, real similar to your factoring method, step one is we're going to set one side equal to zero. Set one side equal to zero. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add seven to both sides. Here's what that looks like. Uh, 7 is not a like term with any of those other terms on the left side of the equal sign because it doesn't have a variable part. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2x squared minus 6x plus 7. Oh, yeah, equals 0 because negative 7 and positive 7 make 0 on the right side. Do you see how that 7 didn't get added to any of the other terms because it's not a like term? You don't write it unless you understand it. Are we good so far? Okay, now what we're going to go ahead and do is identify what A, B, and C are equal to so that we could just plug and chug into our formula. Uh, remember that A, if you'll recall from our definition, I'm going to scroll up just for a second here, A is always the value or the coefficient of your squared term. So A is always the number in front of x squared, including the sign. B, including the sign, is always the coefficient of your x term. And C is what we identify as our constant term. I think that's easy to remember because constant begins with the letter C. So I now know that A in this problem will be 2. B in this problem, including the sign, is going to be negative 6. And C is 7. So here we go. A equals 2, B 
equals negative 6, and C is 7. It is these values of A, B, and C I can now substitute into my quadratic formula. So it looks a little something like this. We go X equals negative blank plus or minus square root blank square minus 4 blank blank all over 2 blank. Now I'm going to take those values of A, B, and C and substitute them into their appropriate spots in the quadratic formula. Now, you're probably saying, Mrs. Lucas, what, what, what's with the parentheses, woman? Why did you put those down there? And let me answer that question for you, if you're like, what's with the parentheses, woman? The answer to that question is that when any of your A, B, and C values are negative, if you go to plug this information into your calculator without those grouping symbols, your calculator will mess up your day. You will get the wrong response. So if you're a person who leans on the calculator to produce some of your responses, then you must remember to include grouping symbols around your A, your B, and your C values, okay? So here's how I go ahead and set that up. I, I open up my quadratic formula. Wherever there was an A or B or a C, I put in a blank denoted by parentheses. We okay with that? Now I go back through the formula and I fill in the numbers into their appropriate spots. So it goes x equals negative b, so b goes in there, plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, like that. If you want to hear the song again tonight, you can go back, watch the video on Blackboard if you need to hear it a couple more times. Play it for the folks at home. It is quite catchy. Uh, so yeah, now what you're going to do is you're going to evaluate this formula. You want to be mindful of the order of operations when you do so. So keep an eye out for PEMDAS. When I proceed forward, I do these problems in three chunks. I simplify three separate chunks. Chunk number one is there. Chunk number two is the denominator. And chunk number three is what we call the square root of the discriminant. The discriminant, or the value underneath that radical, helps me determine how many real solutions this problem will have. That's neither here nor there for you folks right now, but I just wanted to let you know that the number underneath that radical is very special. First things first, I take care of what's easy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, x equals negative b, so I'm going to take care of this piece right here. Negative, negative 6. How do you simplify that? Negative, negative 6. Go ahead, Catherine. Yeah. Yeah. It is a positive value. Very good. The next thing I do is I take care of 2 times 2 on the bottom there. I'll simplify that. 2 times 2 is 4. And then uh, I'll bring across my plus or minus. In the parentheses, so now I have to simplify that, a little radicand, if you will. Do you see how it goes b squared minus 4ac? I see three different operators in there, do you? Oh, yes, I do. I'm going to point them out to you with my little highlighter. I see a squared. I see a minus. And I see, even though it's not there, I see multiplication. Please be very mindful, once again, of your order of operations. So I see squared, I see a minus sign, and I see multiplication. Out of those three, what do you do first? Adam. The exponent. Very good. And please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So you're going to square negative 6, right? All of negative 6. We're squaring negative 6, which means you have to take negative 6 times negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 6 is 36. This number right here is the source of the most amount of mistakes in the quadratic formula. That value right there, when you square B, it is always positive. When you square B, it is always a positive value. So we have B squared. And then we have minus and a product. What are you supposed to do next? Multiply those three numbers together or subtract? 
Do you multiply or subtract? Alex, we multiply. 4 times 2 is 8 times 7 is 56. So we're going to do minus 56 underneath there. Then, I simplify with my subtraction. 36 minus 56 is negative 20, all over 4. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that. Square root of negative 20, you put that in your calculator, it's going to mess you up. So this is no real solution. You can't take the square root of a negative number. It has a complex solution complex set of solutions. Does everybody see why all of a sudden I just stopped? Can't take the square root of a negative number. Questions about that? All right, let's do it again. Woo. And again and again and again. A little drill and practice for you kiddos today. All right, part B. Step one, we get one side equal to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract three. Um, I lied. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. Remember that this 5x is not a like term with any other term on the left-hand side. I would write my response now in the next line down in standard form. So it's going to be 3x squared minus 5x plus 1. And then the right side balances to be 0. Notice I wrote it in this way so that I could easily identify my A, my B, and my C value. A is always the coefficient of your x squared term. B is always the coefficient or the number in front of your x. And C is always your constant tagged on at the end. Don't forget your signs. So for this guy, my A value is 3, because that's the number in front of my x squared. My B value is negative 5, and my C value right there is 1. And now I use my song. <laughs> so I have X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And then I go back in and I plug in the A, Bs, and C values in the spot where they go. So it goes x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, like that. And then again, I like to chunk this into three little mini problems. I like to do this in small bits. Does anybody have any questions on how I set it up? Are they okay so far? Okay. So now... I'm going to go ahead and simplify negative, negative 5. If Catherine was good at this earlier, that's 5, right? And then I simplify the part on the bottom. 2 times 3, that's just 6. And now I have to do my b squared minus 4ac. Remember, we do exponents first because Adam told me to. Well, and it's because it's the order of operation. Negative 5 squared is 25. Adam bullied me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, bring down your minus. I then have to multiply. 5 times 3. Uh, I lied. 4 times 3 is uh, 12, right? So what we end up with here is 5 plus or minus the square root of 13 all over 6. None of that can be simplified. You can't reduce. Square root of 13 doesn't break down anymore with that quotient or the product property for radicals. This does give you two very funky looking decimals. You'd have 5 plus the square root of 13 all over 6. Throw that in your calculator. And then you'd have 5 minus the square root of 13. Then divide that by 6. And that'll give you your two decimal answers if you needed decimals. But in this class, we work really hard to leave our answers exact. So those are our two answers for x. Questions about that? All right, let's do it again. Part C. 3x squared plus 2x. Ugh, I can't read. 3x squared plus 2 equals 4x. So what we're going to go ahead and do is get one side equal to 0. Do that first. Subtract 4x from both sides. 
write it in the correct form. And then I notice I do have some values of A, B, and C there. So A is 3, B is negative 4, and C is 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my quadratic formula. Uh, and I'm going to open it up, leaving some blanks so I can fill in my A, my B, and my C value. So I have X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Then I'm going to go ahead and fill in those values of A, B, and C that I found. So I have X equals negative B plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then I can evaluate. Remember, I like to do it in pieces. So x equals negative negative 4. That's just 4. On the bottom, I have 2 times 3. That's just 6. I'm going to square the value of B. Remember, that's always positive. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. 4 times 3 is 12. Uh, 12 times 2 is 24. Equals negative B. Just looking. I feel like this looks unfamiliar to me. We're okay. So 16 B squared. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, that's fun. We have 4 plus or minus square root, and then 16 minus 24. It's like negative 8, right? Oh, man. See that guy there? Negative underneath the radical. No real solution. Can't take the square root of a negative number. Questions about that? Everybody okay? Let's see how you can do with these. I think we're going to go ahead and let you try the independent practice problems. Do you need to see another one? You just want to hear me sing again, huh? No. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, yeah, go ahead and get started with these two. I'll show you the answer slide in just a moment. We'll walk around and help you out. Remember, first step, get one side equal to zero. Oh, look, it's been done for you. Sweet. So there are your answers to our conclusion questions for today. Uh, a couple of you, like I said, just needed a reminder. Square root of one is one. So you could actually take that out just a little bit further when you go ahead and do those problems. You actually get numbers for part B, um, like real normal people numbers. Uh, we get 3 over 2, which is 1.5, and then you also get 1. So it's not too bad. Woo, okay. Do you have book work tonight? <laughs> you do. Odds. Don't forget to check them in the back of the book, right? You have odd ones tonight, so make sure you're checking yourself. I will catch up with you folks tomorrow. We start applying this information tomorrow in class.